What's up guys, my name is Tim Rosswick and today we're gonna to talk about uh, color theory and how colors can make your game look even better. So let me start out by saying, I primarily would uh, consider myself a programmer. I don't think that I'm a fantastic artist. Uh, I've done art, I've done vector art, I've done, I've built stuff in uh, Illustrator um, here and there. I've done a lot of like minimalist abstract stuff for my mobile games and I've done some, a little bit of character, heart-based character stuff for Father Phobia. But one of the things that I realized making 15 games so far, 12 in the last year, was that the number one thing that made my games look good was not the art, wasn't the effects, it wasn't the, all the crazy stuff that you add in there, it wasn't the polish, all that stuff helps. But the thing that really like made my game stand out, like whether or not people want to even give it a second chance or look at it or it catches their eye, is the colors. The colors are super, super important. And if you think about mobile games these days, like these minimalistic mobile games that you see on iOS or on Android, a lot of them uh, have very simple graphics. Some of them have circles, triangles, squares, basic stuff. What makes them look amazing is the colors that they pick, the contrast between colors, the shades of blue and red, the beautiful like ways that they make these colors interact with each other. And sure, the polish and the feel and the particles and the shadows and all that stuff helps. But the main thing is the colors. And so if you are not a programmer, or um, let, me, let me rephrase that, if you're a programmer and you're not an artist and you want to figure out like the number one thing that you could do to make your game look better, Number one thing is to find the right colors. Now, finding the right colors is, I have, apparently there is entire courses taught on color theory. I haven't been lucky enough to attend any of them, so I don't actually know a ton of color theory myself. Uh, so this video is more based on how to find good colors for your game from a person that knows nothing about color theory. And having had to make a lot of art for my game and figure out like what colors look good together, what colors don't, I kind of play it by ear. I kind of just say, okay, this doesn't look right. That looks way too dark. That looks way too light. I kind of adjust the stuff as I go. And then I try and reuse some of the same shades of color uh, over and over again for the specific types of things. Like if you've seen Phallophobia, you'll know that a lot of the shadows are this dark bluish gray color. A lot of the enemies are this bright red color. It's like the same red color. So you associate, oh, that's an enemy uh, and so on and so forth. So I pick those colors specifically to convey whatever they're supposed to convey in the game. And because of the red, for example, is so much brighter than let's say a blue background, and those colors look really good together, the game comes out looking really good, at least in my opinion. Um, and so how do you find colors? Like what, where do you go? Like how, how does it work? Do you just poke around in Photoshop? Like what do you do? For me, I've gotten better at picking shades of colors, uh, but I again, I don't think there's any process to it. I would love to get an artist to actually interview uh, on the channel and talk about specific color theory and shades of color and all that stuff because... Uh, something I'm really interested in. But for me, with that handicap of having no idea how any of that works, uh, one of the things that I do is I just Google color swatches or shades of color or colors that work well together. Uh, and there are a few tools online uh, that you can go to to kind of look up um, different uh, colors and color combinations. One of my favorites is Paleton. If you just Google it, you can find it. It's a tool where basically you can set a color that you like, and then it gives you like two or three alternate colors that go really well with that color. And you can kind of drag around a color wheel and it gives you opposites of the colors. That's really cool. So using a tool is like my first tip of to find cool colors to match with your game. Because let's say you have one or two colors that you really like, you can kind of use that as a starting point in Palaton or if, if you Google just uh, color swatch creator or something like that, you'll find a bunch of them online. You'll be able to actually get colors that look really good uh, with those colors. The second way is to find actual existing swatches. So this is what I do a lot. And actually Phallophobia started with four colors, four colors, a background, a foreground, an enemy color, and a player co color. And I got all four of those colors from literally one of the top searches for, I think I searched like flat color, um, 
flat color palette or something like that. And, and it was like an image that popped up with like eight different flat colors. And I took those those colors and I used four of them. And that's how I built the original prototypes for Philophobia because I just wanted colors that worked well together. And I found a red, I found a blue, I found a, like a, a shade of bluish white and a shade of bluish black that worked really well. And, and those those colors are still in the game because they work so well together. And like I said, I, I'm not an artist. I can't figure out why some of those colors just work better. That's why I let the artists figure out which colors work better for me most of the time. And I just Google the swatches and I use their colors. Um, and that seems to work for me. And I seem to be able to create things that at least look visually appealing uh, to me. Like I think they look halfway decent. Like if we go into, um, I will show you on my website real quick. Um, so like, I think Ascension looks really good, right? Uh, it's got this like light blue color. Uh, it's got this white and it's got this black. And then the shadows are actually a darker shade of, of, of the purple or the blue, depending on which, uh, thing it's on. And it, it took me a long time to settle with these shades. Like, I don't think all of these look good. Um, I, some of them look better than others. This, I hate this. But like Warp Riders, I think looked really good with the yellow and the purple. It could use some work, obviously. Um, All Followers Lost, I think, works really well with the flat shades of colors that we ended up using. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. Like a lot of these games are not the the best, if we're completely honest here. But this is one of my favorite ones. And then Philophobia, uh, if we look at the website for the game, like I think these colors work really, really well together. I think they they work, they stand out from the background, and it takes a long time to find uh, colors that work, but when you do it right, I think it comes off better. And I'm always improving at this, like I'm still learning all this stuff. This is, I'm not an expert in this by any means, but color is like the number one thing that I feel like has improved my art, improved my games, made me make better games, make like games that look better, uh, than like anything else and when i see a mobile game for example or i see a game usually one of the first things that you see is the color and the color pops out so the color is super super important and i wanted to share that with you today so if there are any artists in there and you 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 want to talk about color theory leave it down below in the comments because I, I would love to get somebody on here to actually discuss this stuff this stuff that i want to learn uh, but if you got any questions on my method my broken programmer method to kind of find um, colors and color theory, um, let me know. Uh, but I appreciate you guys coming out. I appreciate you guys watching this. Uh, my name is Tim Roswick. I'll see you again tomorrow.